Welcome back to Let's Create the Photography Show. I'm doing a little introduction for this guest. He's been a huge inspiration, wrong word. Um, he always gives me the reality check that I need. He keeps me on my toes and he, he basically tells me if I'm doing it right or if I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> and I respect that because this gentleman has a pedigree of photography of many, many years in the profession, and he is a true professional. Some of his shots, his wedding photography, and his landscape photography are the best you will see on YouTube. His editing skills are without a doubt, again, just class, quality. Now, enough blowing smoke up his ass. Let's get on with the show. I hope you enjoy this one, and... Uh, Drop your comments down below. Any questions for my uh, coming victims? <laughs> we do have three in the bag, though. So your questions will be further on down the road. But don't worry, I won't forget. I'll make a note. So drop your questions down below. On with the show! Let's go! Hello and welcome to Let's Create the Photography Show. So here we are tonight, it's Gavin Hardcastle's microphone. Bring it in, bring Gavin in. There we go. Hello, Hello, everybody. Hello, Gavin. You see me just there. Hello. Brilliant. <laughs> right, I've, I've, got hit, a... I've hit record, but it doesn't matter. Um, I've had it, had it recording for 10 minutes before and I didn't realise. If we started, I've got, a bone. I've got a bone to pick with you. Oh, God. What? This is a, it's a sign of getting old. It's like I'm actually drinking coffee. For a I owe you an apology, actually. But you what, go for first. asking all them bum and wasters before asking me? And during Gavin Hardcastle's <laughs> vlog, telling everybody all your fantastic influences, and I never got to mention it. Is it that by any chance, Mally? Is, I, it that, I, is that why you're apologising? No, no. No, I'm, it's not. Oh. I'll, I'll the, first, the first 30 seconds of that Gavin thing, he was like, we need to pretend you're. Uh, I'm. I'm supposed to be speaking to uh, Gary Goff, <laughs> and I'm like, what? He's like, no, go, go, we'll go with it. You come on and say, and I'm introducing, and then say, no, no, where's Gary? Where's? <laughs> I thought that no, was very, you. I was very, I thought, su very surprised when I got a mention. Just for the record, by the way, I asked to interview him, and he refused. No. Um, yeah, yeah, refuse me. And then, if you notice, and this is a dig at you as well, and that Ad Castle bloke, and, well, let's see, it's, let's get it out there. Let's get it out there right from the get-go. Is that you mentioned about special biscuits last week. Yeah. yeah. One of you mentioned if Gary Goff was the one that was interviewing, there oh, wouldn't be any biscuits <laughs> left. Now, the thing is, right, none of you needed to say anything. There was a pregnant pause. Now, sometimes a pregnant pause says it all. <laughs> oh, Honestly, that, that ad castle bloke. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, it was funny. I am jesting, by the way. I do. Oh no, a lot, a lot no, of time I've gone. I've gone red. I'm rather embarrassed. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, talk to me about your photography influences. Come on, let's switch this around again. Hey, I knew remind this me was again. Going... <laughs> remind me again who all those you know photography influences were. Remind remind me again, who is the one that calls you all the time asking if you want to go out? Obviously, pre-lockdown, you know, and obviously we have been out uh, on. on a few occasions as well. Hold on. Just, I did, just throw this back at me. <laughs> Hold on. I didn't mention any photographer influences. Oh, you should listen to your own bloody podcasts. I should. It's a bit boring, though, especially when you've oh, yeah. got, like, Sir Gav Gavin on it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Uh Yeah. Can, can, is, can I just can fun. I just let me just say one let me just say one thing and I'm going to be completely honest here now. Um, oh, um, no, no, no. I, I, what I love about these interviews and the reason why I stopped with the interviews, yeah, I stopped with the interviews. Um, I love doing the interviews. There's nothing better than this one-on-one. -on -one. I absolutely love it. I think it's brilliant. But I stopped it because I was a little bit upset by the lack of people who watch them. And that tells me a lot about YouTube in general. And that's no disrespect to anybody that's watching now, because if you're watching this now, then clearly I'm not aiming this at you. But I had this great idea some time ago to start interviewing people 
did, we started with this Adam Gibbs thing, you know, you were there. Yeah. And again, I just naturally assumed more people would want to get to know the photographer behind the camera. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So having said that, obviously then, you know, I was really disappointed with some of the views I got. I recorded some fantastic people, some really high end photographers and some not so high end photographers. But at the end of the day, it doesn't bother me. I want to know the backstory of everybody, because if you're into photography, that'll do for me. So let me bring you on to the, the next bit, which is a good thing about this, is that I've not really followed Gavin. Um I've not followed Gavin's channel. I'm clearly aware of Gavin's a really, really nice fella. Yeah. But I watched your interview. And because I watched your interview, I'm now a super fan of Gareth's. Of, of Gavin. Of Gavin. <laughs> Cut that Gareth bit out. So it says here, right? It says here. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, so really, what That's you're funny. doing now, I wow. absolutely love and adore. I do because I think people, I think it's good for people if, if they want to, to get to know the person behind the camera. Yeah, my, uh, just just in defence, though, there was no order to these people, by the way. That's just, duly just, noted as well. Just just so you know, it was first yeah. come, whoever come, I asked, and then... Yeah, it just so happens that, you know, how many recordings have you done so far? You're about the 20th. I think. Yeah, and... <laughs> And you, you rung me up two days ago. You didn't ring me up 21 times ago no, and I couldn't not, make no, it or no. I refused because I'm a diva. I'm planning but, on being a diva now and slamming my microphone. Uh, I'm walking out. I, I noticed I've there's not, a microphone while I aimed at my headpiece. I've not, re I've not recorded that many yet, Gary, to be honest. I know, it's, I know uh, I'm just pulling your leg. It's all, it's, all just, um, it's all just happening. I'm not yeah. planning it. I'm doing my research and I'm looking at the people, but I'm asking people who, who I admire, I ask people I respect, and I am friends. Well, some of them. Some of them can. <laughs> some, some sneak through. Some sneak through. <laughs> I've got loads here. I, I show everyone this. See, there, there's my research. The blank piece of yeah. blank's not blank. There you can see there. That's good, that, yeah. Uh, so that, that's been a week's work, that, because you're a very elusive man. Let me just also find out, just to save me being a Burke, because obviously, you know, age is beginning to creep in a bit. Keep up. We are actually videoing this now, aren't we? And the reason why I say that, because I spent an hour and a half looking at my video and not looking at you on the screen, looking at my video when I was interviewed by somebody else for an hour and a half, only to find out it was actually a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that was going out using just audio. And I spent all my time, which is quite uncomfortable, you must admit, just looking at your camera it and is. not looking down at your screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's really awkward with this because you're to the side. So the camera's up here and I'm, I'm I can't, I'm going to talk to you. I'm looking at your face. Rather, I should be looking here. And uh, yeah. young, young Dermid or Donovan. He, he interviewed me a couple of weeks ago, which was great fun. I've never been interviewed like that. Yeah. Apart from Darren Spoonley for the Irish Photography Podcast, which wasn't yeah. video, but we still talking about. But we still had video on talking to each other, but it was just <laughs> yeah. a podcast. So that was yes. that was good fun. But what what Dodd wanted me to do was record on my Z7. He wanted right. the best quality footage, which is right. what you were saying tonight, and that looks fine. So I'd never done this before, and. I, and it was it was really awkward because you're looking straight. Vlogging's different, isn't it? You're imagining yeah. the audience, so yeah, that's yeah, all yeah. right. But when Dodd's there and he's ah oh god, that that was that's hard. That's hard to talk to a proper camera like that and not not keep yeah. looking down, you know. So it it is a tricky thing to do, and you'll know yeah. you, you'll know when vloggers are very new to vlogging. Because they're not looking at the camera, they're looking at themselves on their screen. So whether they're videoing themselves on their iPhone or whether they're videoing, videoing themselves on a uh, you know a camera with a flip out screen, their yeah. their face is like this all the time. <laughs> as do you understand what I mean? And it's not making eye contact, and it's really really frustrating. But of course, that's all part of the learning process if you want to be a yeah. vlogger. I'm guessing. I did it. I did it. And you know what? You've just took me nicely onto me. Well, it's not actually a question. My first video I ever did was at Malham Lawn Tree. Oh, was it? Yeah. And all so, I did was look at myself because on the iPhone, the camera's to the side. Yeah. 
and I, I have thought about removing that video, but then I think, oh, Vanny, you leave it up there. It just shows you how the progression, it shows you how rubbish you are. And then you come on, this is the difference. Then you come on today, yesterday, and said, go and watch my first video. Uh, 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 right here at this spot, it's really good, you know. <laughs> and I just thought, that's Gary. That, that's it, there, right there. <laughs> Go and watch my first video from here. I've gone full circle. It's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is. It is. For, for oh, being you. your first vlog, like when I look at mine and it was shocking, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've got... it's... Go, Go on. on, sorry, Gary. No, I was gonna say it's quite strange actually because it was there was a few people that had a dig at me for that that video because I thought, you know, when I started vlogging, I just put that video together. And all of a sudden, I just got this backlash from people saying, oh, your audio is all over the place. The music's terrible. You've just chosen that rubbish music from uh, from YouTube, which I did because I didn't know any different. I thought that's what everybody did. And yeah. I heard this tune. I thought that really sounds good. Obviously, so did a million plus other people. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody started giving me grief. And I thought, I'm just doing this in my own time, making a yeah. video because I liked it for myself. And people are giving me grief. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? So bizarre, yeah. So that's one thing that you you do have to uh, you, you've got to grow a backbone. Yes, haven't you? You've got to do. grow a, a backbone. Yeah, uh, I just got a bit of grief now from my last video. I don't, to be fair, I don't. I don't know why I get grief. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had some lad, some lady, some lady on there. And she was very abrupt, uh, abrupt, in, abrupt in the comments, yeah. and uh, and it was just because I mentioned that the Sony. Um, yeah, that's it. The, the, the Sony menu system is disgusting. And I think is I still stand by that. You know, but, but then again, that's my opinion. You know, I, I'm not a Sony shooter, but what people fail to appreciate is obviously pre-lockdown, every week I've got loads and loads of people in my studio because it's what I do full time. I teach, I train, and I get loads of different cameras in my hands all the time. And I'm flicking through and flying through menu systems all over the place. But when it comes to Sony, it's a completely different ball game. And I never said I didn't like the cameras. The cameras are fantastic. I just yeah. think somebody from Apple should actually, and I think Tony and Chelsea Northrup mentioned this as well. It's just like Sony should invest in somebody from Apple to come and sh and make it user friendly. I know yeah. that's going to upset people, but UX UI Sorry. is a lot for me because of my job. So user experience and user interface these yeah. days is, I think, more important than it's ever been. And yeah. I've never, I can't say anything about Sony because I've never touched one, never looked at a menu, never tried it. But I know from other technology, so I always buy LG tellies because an LG telly for me, everything's in the right place, all the menus, you, all the brightness, everything, HD, all that, I just know where it is. Now, the mother-in-law's got a Sony uh, TV and I just... I couldn't even find where you switch from like the different aspect ratios or anything from HD to 4K. I'm, I'm like, yeah. this has got to be a 4K telly. I couldn't find it. Um, so I think it's even with like the Xbox, um, they have a, a crazy menu system. So it's like I was saying the other day, the world mm. is polarized. It's 50-50. And it seems to me that 50% of the people out there love Sony menus systems yeah. and then there's us other half that struggle with it because i think you become used to something so if you had a sony for probably a month you'd, you you might you'd be on it you'd be like right got it i've customized it to how yeah. I, I like yep um but yeah i'm not gonna mention I, and, you, and you're 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 absolutely right you are absolutely right you do get used to what you get used to yeah but you have a general feel for it. And what I don't like about Sony, and I think this is, again, all these things are just personal. And if it's personal, then it's just my opinion. You know, sure. yeah. if you disagree with me, that's fine, but it's my opinion. But Sony, they're not small players in this market. Sony are huge players. I believe that their market share is bigger than Nikon. I might be wrong. I'm led to believe that the Sony market share for cameras, oh, I hope I'm not talking Mirrorless about cameras, about. they're the leader, oh, yeah. I think. Yeah. possibly but they're certainly uh, they're bigger than the nikon it might just be the mirrorless cameras but so to me right you should be giving more back it sh why not make it more user friendly apparently the newer cameras yeah when i say the newer i must be talking about the ones that's been released in the last 12 months their systems are a lot more user friendly 
But then also to know in defense of Sony users and anybody else who owns a camera, is it once you've got your way of working and your menu set up, you very rarely ever go into your menus anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I don't know how often you go into your menus, but you very rarely go into your menus. But I tell you what, let's not just stop there, Mally. Let's not stop there. Let's not upset all the Sony users and, 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 and make them feel left out. Let's upset all the Nikon users as well. Because I don't shoot... I've already what? had this. I've already had this off Gareth saying to well, me, yeah. why is the eye button there? And then why on the screen does it have an eye button? There's an information button and an inf actual physical information button on the camera. And it's right. Like, well, I, I can't answer. <laughs> I have two massive bugbears and they're, 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 they're major, major, major faults in my opinion. Right. So get ready. If you're a Nikon user, get ready. This is my opinion, but I'm telling you straight from the heart. This is why I don't like the Nikon systems. It wouldn't stop me buying a Nikon, by the way. Uh, I am a Nikon fanboy. I love the pictures they take. The D850 yeah. is probably one of the best cameras that money can buy. I do love that camera. But two things that really upset me with Nikons. One, I'm left-eyed. That oh. means I pick my camera up. I place the eyepiece to my left eye. Where's my right thumb on my shutter speed i'm poking my eye out like this all the time because i shoot in manual everything's done on the fly everything's done in the viewfinder i'm poking my eye out it's so irritating that's one the second one is way worse than that so i think that's a design fault well i bet all the nikon users now are really cringy the second am, one right i am which is which is a major major flaw as far as i'm concerned is why on earth if you want to switch your iso to auto or from auto You've got to do it and can only do it in the menu, menu. systems. Yeah. Unless, obviously, you've gone into the menu systems and pre-programmed a button to do that for you. But that's not by default. By default, you've got to go into your menu system and tell it, hey, Nikon camera, I want you to work in or ISO auto or ISO manual. But worse than that is if you put it into ISO auto and then select ISO 800 from your normal ISO shortcut button, it's still in ISO auto if you didn't realize it. Sorry, but I do not get or understand that. I'm like, I'm, I'm on a soapbox now. This is great. I'm well, on a soapbox. I was going to say it. something about auto ISO, but yeah, I can understand why you use auto ISO hmm. for street photography. Uh, mostly, wouldn't it be? You know, where you, well, you don't, you just want to. Lots of things. Let the, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Lots of things. I, I, I've never used auto ISO. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm a manual user through and through, but there are times when I'm, or I will gladly use uh, auto ISO, um, not if I'm working for a client, but if I'm working for myself. And what I mean by that is, let's say if I'm going to do bird photography, bird photography is a great example. I'm happy to put my camera into manual. Yes. I want, I want F8. I want a thousandth of a second if that's the, the shutter speed that I want. And yeah. then I'm then happy if the bird's moving from broken cloud to sky, broken cloud yeah, to sky. Auto ISO. To, yeah. Auto yeah. ISO, that makes a lot of sense. So, so why we're ripping the crap out of everyone, let's just raise something about the Canon cameras here, what you've put out. What's that? I've got, oh, there's a fire alarm. I've got to go. <laughs> how much go How much camera and lens was that? Go for it. 28 uh, to 70 lens. Wow. Yeah. That was some lens, that. Wow. I got a phone call today. got a phone call today, actually. And um, it was from the lad Lee who lent it to me. And he said, I've got a, yeah. I've got a, a bone to pick with you. He said, two thousand pound, my ass, for that lens. Yeah, it's four thousand pound. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, not much change out of four grand. Yeah, I think it's like three grand. Yeah, and, uh, and you, again, I, I had somebody that gave me grief. I said right from the get go, <laughs> right? It's, un it's unbelievable how people just don't listen or, or want to vent their their opinion. Which fine, I've got no problem. I've got no problem with it as long as nothing's no personal. But they said they actually said to me, what sort of comparison was that? Well, first of all, the R6, I was graciously lent, and it came with that lens. I had no choice of lens, yeah. and I, he didn't have an adapter, so I couldn't use my same. So at the end of the day, I just had to use that one or the other. And he said to me then, he said, and of course, if you're going to use a base ISO, as in ISO 100, and you're going to use F11, then they're always going to look the same. And I'm like, 
hang on a minute, we're making a comparison between non-year-old technology and a yeah. very soft lens produced by Canon, albeit a pro lens, against probably one of the best lenses that Canon have ever produced and brand new technology. How can it not be better? And, Surely, for, and for landscape photography. And for lens, you yeah. know, they're not selling it. Oh, by the way, if you're a landscape photographer, don't bother buying it because it's the same old crap that you bought nine years ago. They're not yeah, saying that, are they? You wouldn't take that 28 to 70 out for landscape. I wouldn't anyway. That's a studio oh. lens, isn't it? But that's the only lens you had to use. So absolutely, um, what a lens, though. I, 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 I'm not a fan of Canon, but I was looking at a lens and going, wow. There's no wow. question. You know me, you know what I do. I shoot yeah. lots of weddings, portraits, studio yeah. work. Um, I shoot models. I do everything. Now, that lens, I probably Oof. couldn't buy a better lens if I tried, yeah. right? Then pushing it at F2, you know, yeah. really wide open, just get that bokeh on the go and really pushing the boundaries of that lens. I'd love to do that. But you don't yeah. do that with landscape photography. That's why I made it perfectly clear. This yeah. is this. Don't get me going. <laughs> right. First question. Oh, we got questions. Have we it's, started yet, by the way? I, I should I should actually read this. It's clear to see your bonkers, but I actually meant it's clear to see your bonkers about photography. But what yeah. do you love shooting the most? Because you've just said you do portrait, you do wedding, you do landscape. Now I, I know the answer to this to a degree, but it is split down the middle. This what do you love shoot? What what really gets the juices flowing? Because your wedding stuff, your wedding photography is out of this world. And if anyone out there doesn't know, or hasn't seen Gary's wedding photography, um, does you're talking best in the country, uh, wedding photographer without a doubt. Oh, cheers. Um, if that, obviously, thanks, Molly. It's a bit embarrassing you saying that, but um, no, that's right. Thank you very, thank you very much indeed. Um, that's assuming that you like my style, of course. Um, yeah, do you know what I like? I, I mean, I, 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 the answer to the question is I don't really know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm in this industry because I love taking pictures. I'll give you an example. You know, I, I went off a couple of weeks ago to make a vlog, and I went down just a local wildlife center with my one to four hundred. Now I wasn't sure just after a snowfall, wasn't sure whether I was going to capture landscapes or whether I was going to capture. Uh, a bit of you know wildlife oh, yeah. so i went geared with everything and then just went for a walk and i thought let's vlog it and see how we go and of course there was just nothing to see <laughs> nothing to see the snow was starting to melt so it started looking a bit dirty you don't want to yeah. snow start so none of that adam gibbs rubbish it just start started to look dirty and, and you don't want to put yorkshire that. snow yeah yorkshire snow yeah i went onto the lake and the lake was there was just no animals or birds or anything and i was feeling a bit depressed and thinking i even said to the wife Paula, you know, when, I, when we were walking around, I have to photograph something or I can't put a vlog out. And But we got some bird seed. You've probably seen a video. I'm not really sure. Yes. But then we pulled over. and we, uh, So pulled over. We just then went to a bird feeding station. I was freezing cold when I came home. We must have been there for about four hours. Yeah. I was super excited. So even that infused me, infused me. It just really got me going. But no, in answer to your question, briefly, sorry, um, I, I do tend to waffle on a bit. No. I think I prefer it if I can manipulate a scene. Yes. In other words, if it is wedding photography, as in if I'm able to manipulate the scene, as in working with models and so on and so forth, then, yeah, all of that. I do commercial stuff in the studio, but that can be exciting. But more often than not, it's not. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's not. So if I can manipulate a subject, I like if i get a model in is you dodge and burn you use light you change the scene yeah. by controlling yeah. the way the light is given to the viewer it's the uh, subject as well yeah yeah the story yeah yeah it's the subject well i'll give you i'll give you an example go on, go on very briefly we um we do a lot of wedding photography training now i could get models i could pay for models to come in and I could just say, give me this look, give me that pose. And then all the um, attendees go home with some amazing pictures of a beautiful bride and a beautiful groom. But that's not how it is. So no. I don't do that. So what I do is, yes, I'm going to get nice people, but I'm going to get people who aren't models. 
to model for me. So we put them in a wedding dress. And the reason why I say that is because part of my teachings is to teach them how to manipulate somebody who is just going to stand there like this when you're yeah. ready to take a picture of them. Obviously, I'm not talking about all the candid stuff that you photograph all day long. But when you want to have a bit of me and bride and groom time, then, you know, there will be some elements of manipulation with them to get the pictures looking right. At the end of the day, we're all looking for mantelpiece pictures, just like when we go out shooting landscapes, we all want to come away with those, you know, um, awesome Vista pictures, those big printable pictures. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I don't know if that's answered your question. It doesn't matter. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> it's belting. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just going to jump back in time as well, because this to me is, is a something else you don't really speak about. You 12 years as a, a Royal Air Force, in the Royal Air Force, and in that photography club shooting with the 35 mil, um, obviously SLR, was that the beginning? Was that the seed? Was that the start of this enthusiasm? Because what a place to do it. What a, You know, I'd love to see some of your images from back then. Now, I know I have seen one particular image where you're with HRH, I think, in a lineup. Um, yeah. That was a, a while back. I can't remember if that was a video or if you showed it me or not, but it would be great to see and look back at some of them experiences or images from that time that, that you took. You should have um, <laughs> you should have smelt my uh, my boss's underpants when the HRH came over and spoke to me, yeah. me of all people, yeah. you know. You could, you could, you could have chosen, because I was obviously a bit of a rogue at the time, you know, no. when I, I yeah, joined the RAF. And, uh, you know, I, I had a, a good boss who kept me under control all the time. So when HRH saw me taking pictures of him and just walked straight up to me, started, started asking me questions, my boss was like this, do not say anything out of line. You know, you could feel the dig in the back. And it's yeah. like, oh, my God, yeah. So, yeah. No, I had a, had a, had a, fantastic, had a fantastic time. I, I'll give you um, – I joined the RAF by mistake. Uh, <laughs> Go, go, go figure that. Honestly, I was working with my mate and he said to me, I'm going to join the Navy. I'm like, what? At the time, I didn't even know that, what, what armed forces were. Yeah. Straight up. He yeah. said, I'm going to join the Navy. He said, would you come down to, um, to the offices for me? I'm going to get interviewed this afternoon. So we went down at lunchtime. So I just sat there um, and it was like the recruitment office. And he went upstairs to be interviewed. And there was an army guy sat there. And an RAF guy sat there and they were both trying to recruit, obviously, one for the army, one for the RAF. And then they just saw me sat there. I was the only person there. So they both just like dug into me yeah. and they convinced me to join. And I didn't know what I was doing. And I swear to God, I went home at night and I said to my mum at the time, um, I was 17. I said to my mum, you never guess what I did today. Right. Oh, straight God. up. Bless her. She goes, what? I said, I'm joined the RAF. She goes, yeah, right. <laughs> get, your, <laughs> get your tea and get out on your skateboard. Because <laughs> that's what I was doing when I was 17. Yeah, Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. A month later, I was in square bashing. A month wow. later in the RAF. Whoa. How nuts is that? When I joined the RAF, I did one of um, um, one of three things. I joined the Sabakwa. So within the first week of after um, I'd gone through all my training, I joined a tobacco club, I joined a camera club, and I joined a gym. And I've never been to a gym in my life at that point, although I was stick thin and probably uh, very healthy and fit, as you can imagine, you know, at that age. Yeah. And um, when all you ever did is play out, let's be honest. And the um, tobacco lasted all of maybe two, maybe three months because it was all health and safety. And uh, as an 18-year-old kid, you just want to shove oxygen on your back and yeah. throw yourself oh. into into the sea and start looking for the Titanic. That's that's your mindset at that time. So it was too much health and safety. Um, with the gym, I ended up spending maybe 25 or 30 years playing uh, basketball at a fairly high oh, standard. Wow. So count, county standard, I used to play for the RAF as well. Uh, I got all my <laughs> RAF colours and stuff. Anyway, yeah, so I did that uh, quite a bit. I recently gave up, actually. So I never used to look like this with my big fat belly and stuff. Um, and then with my photography, that then carried on throughout my RAF career. And I ended up running Camera Club. So I've been into photography for a, a very long time. A very long time. Uh, 50, 60 years now, Gary, isn't it? <clears throat> 1979, I joined the RAF. And yeah. I was 18 at the time. I just, just turned 18. Wow. Well, I love that. That's great. Mm. I think you should get some pictures out and do a vlog on that. That'd be awesome. On the other side of the coin, right, <laughs> let me just explain. I had a bit of a, 
an eye opener last week. Okay. And this is, you know, one of those moments where you sit back and look around and think, how did I get to this? How yeah. did I end up here? And it was the most surreal, surreal time. I've been heavily involved in, I won't tell you, that's another part of my life that I'll keep secret, but I've been heavily involved in music for 30 years, heavily, a bit interesting to hear Gavin talk about that last week, but I've been heavily involved in music for 30 years, and I've had a really, I've had a good life, and quite boisterous, I'm still quite I suppose, in my own mindset, quite young for my age. Yeah. Now, I've gone from that, raving it up, um, festivals, festivals and more festivals and getting drunk here and getting drunk there. I went from all of that to last week where I was stood in a line full of OAPs waiting, waiting for my vaccination jab. So, so I just stood there looking around thinking, I'm in a line of OAPs. I now qualify to stand in this line next to all these OAPs because pretty much that's what I am. And I'm stood there waiting for a vaccination jab because the country's concerned about my life. <laughs> it's like, this is the most surreal yeah. thing. Yeah. The most yeah. surreal thing. Yeah. Wow. I've had the mickey took out of me because on Thursday, I'm going for my jab. At your age. I, well, thanks. I'm, Thanks. I thought, I thought you'd been there two months ago. <laughs> Bob on. <laughs> Brilliant. How, how old are you, Mally? I'm shocked. I'm 47. How come you're getting yours then? I've not a clue. That's very young. I'm not. I've not. They're absolutely flying through people in this town. They've mm. done a lot of people, but it's been very bad here. One of the worst areas in the country. So I'm guessing that's probably one of the reasons. But yeah, I'll be stood like you on Thursday, going, "Why am I here? What's going this, on? This is this is surreal. Fantastic. But I by am the way. looking I, I, forward I, to it. <laughs> it was fantastic. By the way, I, I, I didn't yeah. mean to sound that in a, in a derogatory fashion. It's no, just one no, of those wake up. It's yeah. one of those wake up and smell the coffee yeah. moments. It's like, yeah. how, how did I end up <laughs> yeah. in, to, in this situation? Raving it's, one minute, uh, immunize the next. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the most surreal moment. And and and, and on yeah. top of that, my father now has um, children in their 60s. Wow. And it's almost like I'm getting as old as my dad. <laughs> my dad's 85. I just turned 60. My sister's 62. Have you? And I had yeah, yeah, yeah. was near, fifth, near 60, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, I'm 60. Yeah, my, my sister is, well, actually, she's 61, 62 coming up in right. May. Uh, but my brother is 16 years younger than me. Oh, wow. Come whip a snapper. Yeah, I was the bad. I'm the babby of the family as well. Yeah. yeah. And thing is with me though, I'm still waiting for puberty to kick in. <laughs> it's going to happen soon though, isn't it? Maybe I'll grow a beard soon. It, it's on your head. <laughs> it is. I think. Can you see the glue? Can you see the glue there? You see the glue there, can't you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, not weird. Uh, yes, mate. I, okay. I, I, I'm I'm not bothered about these questions. We could just talk all night, me and Dee, I reckon. I, I was going I'm not to, sure it's going to... I know, yeah. Well, we've been at it for over an hour now, so let, let's have we a look here. We have. An hour I'm, not, and... I'm not sure how entertaining this is going to be for people, that's all. And now, and now, oh, don't, must... don't worry about it. I'm not doing it for that. Someone said to me the other day about it. I said, I'm not... I'm not well, I don't understand what you're saying. This isn't about... Um, this is something that's going to be put out and will be there for a, as long as it is YouTube or is there. Hang on, Gavin's back. Hi, uh, Gavin. Hi, Gavin. <laughs> Gavin. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Gavin. Just getting you back what you said about uh, the biscuits. <laughs> too share. Too share. Do, do you know uh, what, I like about, what I like about this as well? It might not be entertaining for other people, but when you do podcasts, I mean, because I actually, I really do miss the podcast that we used to do on a, on a, on a weekly basis. I really, really do miss it. Yeah, and the no, reason it's... why is because yeah. um, you can just be yourself. Yeah. It, it's not like you're, you, you don't mind who you upset, but if I have an opinion and I want to share an opinion, then I should be allowed to. Why, why shouldn't I be allowed to? Like if other people want to have an opinion about me or my work or pictures I take, then fine. They have that opinion. So why can't we? And you can, tend to you know be a bit more open yeah when you do things like this as opposed to when Personal. you go out with a video you generally have yeah you, you know exactly what you're going to do from start to finish pretty much do you know what some, i mean some of us do 
<laughs> I don't. Yeah, well, no, I don't either. <laughs> That's one thing I need to learn to do, actually. Yeah. Yeah, write a bit of a storyboard or have a bit of a, an idea or behind. I, I don't do any of that. And uh, I, I'm not, I, I'm I not bothered. I'm not bothered. Uh, I, I, it's it's back to this thing again. Um, it's a pleasure. Like this now, we're just chatting. Although I am different. I, I have noticed this. What I'm finding interesting is that I'm, I'm loving listening. Uh, instead of like where, when I was in the podcast, you're having a debate. So you, you've got to... You've got to scrap. You've got to get your opinion over. Sometimes I did it too much. Um, but with this, I, I, I can shut up and I can really take in what you're saying and listen to what the guest's saying. And I'm really enjoying that because like yourself and other people like I've got coming on, you know, like um, Nick. Nick's, I think Nick's going to be the next one that goes out. And it, it was an absolute joy to listen to his 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 knowledge, his details, and 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 the way he explained things, it was just that was uh, like a realization. Doing this, the the podcast, that um, I'm getting information here straight from passion, from the soul. This is coming from a person's own um, enjoyment and why they do it. Like yourself, with I've wrote here about he's bonkers about photography. I'm bonkers about <laughs> photography. I think I think if it's it's a it, it fills it envelops you, doesn't it? Photography, you've got to be into it so much to be able to see it. Sure. So you you've got achievements, awards, and recognition for photography and your professional side. But one of the things that stands out for me is is just the quality. You said you like manipulating images. I've watched a lot of vloggers and I've watched a lot of YouTube people who do editing. Um, they do a lot of luminosity, mass, they do a lot of technical. But I think you're the one person that I've seen that can take an image and on screen remove things from the scene, create a piece of art from the, the living world, from the real world that becomes fine art but the way that you do it is you make it so I could do that. So when you watch it, you see what you're doing. You think I could do that. You couldn't. It takes time, practice, many years of learning. But the fact that you make people think that, I think it's wonderful because then they'll have a go and then the results are just going to get better and better and better through time. So you, you're the only person I know out there. I've seen edit images in the way you do a fine art way in Photoshop professionally. And well, well, I'm obviously I'm obviously not the only one, but well, you know, we're, no, we're forever, it's we're forever the way, learning. No, but it's the way you do it, Gary. Yeah. You're not the only one, no. But there's a certain way that you do it to transform a scene. I'm a huge fan of uh, of Michael of Michael Kenner, and McKinnon. you do a, you do a, oh, oh, oh. Michael Ooh. Kenner. Oh, I thought I thought you better say Peter McKinnon. I've no, no. idea what I got Peter McKinnon from that one. Ooh. <laughs> It'd be funny for see him edit and make a fine out. Picture. <laughs> Peter, when you watch this, lad, knock yeah. a video up for us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do us a fine out video. No, yeah. just so. Where did you get that? Where did that? Because that is that something that you've just fell into? I thought, no, I really want to create that style of photography. Um, well, I, I I think it's when it comes to when it comes to anything, you know you you draw inspiration from things that you see you draw you know if you're into photography then when you come home from work assuming you're not a photographer but if you're into photography the chances are you're going to pick up a photography magazine or you're going to pick up your 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 ipad with your magazines on there and start mm -hmm. flicking through and you know i've heard other people mention it as well you know you've got a list of places where you want to go you, you see pictures that other people take and you think yeah i don't want to replicate that but clearly that's fantastic you know i'd love to go there love to have a go to have a go at that so i suppose you know no one's ever going to be the first as much as do you really want to copy other people i don't know but when you're learning you do copy other people but i don't i don't really know i don't know the answer to it it's just that sometimes you see something and you like it and you draw inspiration from it, which is testament to whoever's picture you see or have seen. And then, you know, you just try it for yourself and then you just try and make it your own. But this is you. I mean, this is your, mm. your techniques in Photoshop and creating finer yeah. images are just sublime. 
Uh, and the other thing that you go out as well and you'll make something from nothing. The tractor. Uh, at, yeah, uh, yeah. That that was brilliant. That because I did look and think, what a trap! What's what what's what's he doing here? What's going? And, yeah. I, and it was brilliant, brilliant image as well. well I'm not sure if you saw, well, you obviously you saw that video, but did you see the family? If you look back yeah. at the family photo yeah. shoot that I did, I just accosted some family. I just yeah. literally accosted a family that was at the beach. They just literally came down. They were looking around. So I thought I saw them and I thought, oh, I've got a great idea. Let's do the same thing, but do it with a family because that's what I do when I take, you know, uh, take families out to do lifestyle shoots. And I just thought it would come across really well on the video. Everybody in the family, if you go back and look at it, everybody in the family is fine, but you could see the dad was keeping a beady eye on me. He was like, he just, I'm not sure what's see, going on he? here. This big lump come running up to me and his big well, he's covered in mud. You know, and all of a sudden he said, hi, can I take a, your family for family picture of you guys, but you know that's 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 just me. I sent them. I sent them the picture, by the way, and, oh, and he actually came back and said, "I, I never thought I'd um I, I'd ever see this picture, but thank you very much indeed." And he oh, sub wow. subsequently subscribed to my YouTube channel. So <laughs> that's brilliant. Oh, they've been chuffed for get that picture though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just, yeah, I just, I don't know, it's what I do. I do like my creative lighting. Now, I must admit, I thought yeah. I would have done more of it yeah. by now. Yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, but the thing is, it's very difficult when you do this for a profession. Difficult as in, what do you, you can't give everything away. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a trade secret. There's only things that you might not know that other people don't. There's no such thing as a, as a magic tip. This is why I'm not keen yeah. and I hate all these tips to videos because they attract lots of views. And I think for all the wrong reasons, because people think that the reason why my pictures aren't as good as his pictures or her pictures is because there's clearly a tip that they know that I don't. So they watch all these tips videos thinking there's going to be one that's just going to make that light bulb moment. Ding. And I'm going to I'm going to overnight become a brilliant photographer. And that just doesn't happen. No. It doesn't happen. There's no magic formula to any of this. It's just really look at other people's work, dissect it like you would do if you were a footballer. If you were a footballer, you're going to watch Ronaldo, you're going to watch Messi play. You're going to try and figure out how they dribble the ball, how they hold it next, how they control it, how they look, how they pass, how they shoot. You know, well, that's the same for any walk of life, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I tend not to do that, though. I do make life difficult um, for myself. Uh, I do tend not to look or dissect or look at other photographers. Um, for instance, I listen to a podcast called Frames, and there's a, another one um, called Lensworks. Uh, with a, and a, he's he's obviously he's been photographing for forty, fifty years. This gentleman, uh, Brooks Jensen, right. ah, and he's fantastic. He's the way he speaks about photography and everything. And today was the first time I'd looked at a, 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 an Adam's picture <laughs> properly, proper looked at a, a master's picture, if you like. And some people yeah. might think that's ridiculous. All this time and you haven't actually looked at another photographer's or dissected another photographer's image. But we look at them and I look at them, but I don't really break them apart and try and figure it out. Um, so it is interesting to do that. You're right, you'd look at your footballs, the greats, and analyse and see how they get it. But for some reason, I, I haven't done that with photography. I've done that with everything else and design, and I've just kind of tried to plough my own field at the moment. Uh, and that, you know, well, you've got to duff your cap to you for that, absolutely. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just, I'm detracting ever so slightly, trying to do something on my PC. Um, Stop yeah, looking yeah, at porn, Gary. Pretend <laughs> the porn. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I admire you for that, but are you doing yourself an injustice? Yeah, I don't, I'm not be. suggesting for one second that you should copy other people, but if you were to do a photography degree, by the way, which is the most bizarre thing because you, you, you don't really take that many pictures. It's all about learning the art by looking yeah. at other people's work. And, you know, I draw inspiration from pretty much everybody who I, 
who I watch. And I don't only watch the masters. There are so many fantastic YouTube yes. vloggers that go out and take brilliant pictures, yeah. you know, and, and it's test hats off to them. You know, some of them will have very low subscriber counts, but they're still out week in, week out. And a lot of them are fantastic. And let's yeah. be honest, you know, the only reason why maybe I have a bit more than other people or a lot of other people is simply because I've been doing it longer. I'm talking yeah. about vlogging, not necessarily photography. Yeah. And and having the persistence to keep keep at it, you know, keep going. Yeah, that's key, isn't it? It's that persistence. It's, it's hard work. It is hard work, yeah. The persistence and the time it takes to do it, to put something out. And you pretty much put one out week in, week out. And I've been doing for a, a long, long time. I have. Um, I, I love, I, I, going back to the interviews, I do, I do love the interviews. I mean, I remember I'm um, a massive fan of uh, Mike Brown. So I yes, found out where, where, Mike, yeah. where Mike Brown lives. You know, a massive, massive fan of Mike <laughs> Brown. And all of a sudden, I, could, I can just see his face now, although I couldn't see his face because I just I emailed him and then eventually we got talking on the email and then on the phone. And then he said to me, um, you know, let me get this right. Didn't know who I was. <laughs> he said, you know, um, you're prepared to travel all the way down to, to Southampton, yeah. right? Stop overnight in your cronky old van, then travel all the way back. That's going to cost you a tank full of fuel just to interview me. And of course, he didn't know who I was. And I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, I'd love to get to know you. I'd love to get to know the photographer behind yeah, great, um, be, behind the camera. And I swear, even when I turned up, right, I knocked on the door and him and his PA that was there, they were both still very standoffish. We laugh about it now. They were still both very standoffish and looking at me as if to say, so well, what are you hoping to gain from this? I'm like, no, Mike, I'm not. I just want to come and chat with you. Yeah. You know, and at the end of it, to be fair, we were like best friends and, you know, and and, oh, and then wow. we parted company and I travelled all the way home. <laughs> yeah, and I absolutely yeah. adore Mike Brown. Uh, yeah. yeah, DSLR I got in 2012, a Pentax. And yeah. I think... Oh, that's I, a shame. And, uh, look, I've, you know, you know what's a shame? <laughs> We haven't done Pentax. We've done Nick on Sony. Done, Why not do Pentax? A, damn, sh <laughs> it was a brick. But it's a shame I got rid of it. I wish I hadn't. I wish I'd have <clears> kept that camera now. It, it kind of bugs me a little bit. A K7 it was. Um, I missed I missed just seeing the camera. It's so strange yeah. how you get attached yeah. to a, a camera. But Mike Brown was like someone I just... I remember him whacking a fork on a lens and he did things where you built up with this idea of, of kit gear and he would just go, no, D300S and one lens. And he's still saying now with the Fuji system. And back then watching that, it was all about where you stand, how you frame, yeah. how you compose the picture. So I guess, yeah, I've looked at people. Mike, Mike was someone I watched so much of. So when you did that interview, I was like, oh, get in. This will be very good. And it was. And I'd love to interview Mike as well, but I think he'd tell me to. <laughs> no, well, you just, you just ask, Mike. All you need to do is yeah. just ask. Yeah. What you, um, I'm just trying to think now. There was a couple of occasions when I was chatting with people when all of a sudden you forget what you're doing because you're so engrossed in listening to them. And that's happened to me on, on a, a, a few occasions. Um, obviously, uh, people like Nick Page, a massive admirer of Nick Page. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Mike Brown, I'm just sat across the way. Obviously, it's yeah. long before the, uh, the COVID thing kicked in. And we're just chatting. And he's super passionate about photography. And I remember just asking him about, you know, can I ask what camera gear that you're going to use or what you're currently using? Because uh -huh. obviously, I'm guessing people who, are, who watch... And are, are listening and i've never seen anybody switch off from an interview <laughs> ever and he said no not really he said do we have to oh, okay yeah. i'll tell you i'm using this at the other right next and then kind of moved on from it very quickly and i thought you know what wow. that's so fantastic and then yeah. he said to me one thing and my jaw dropped and i just like looked at him and he said <clears throat> i got this philosophy and that is upgrade the photographer not the photographer's gear yeah and i thought 
Wow. Oh my God, I've been preaching that for years, but I've never said it like that in a sentence. You know, upgrade the photographer, not the gear. I think yeah. word for word is what he said. And yeah. I just looked at him and I thought, oh my God, <laughs> I'm listening yeah. to a master. That's brilliant. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. And the other one, very quickly, is Nick Leavesey. Like you mentioned Nick yes, earlier Nick on. Leavesey. I did yeah. a, I did a vlog with Nick and <sighs> Nick is so passionate. You yeah. know, the worst thing you could ever do when you're out and about with him is say, look at all that green moss on that on that rock. <laughs> Because all of a sudden he'll go into he'll go in and explain how the rock was formed and why the green moss is on it and yeah. what 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 I would say brand brand what what type of moss that is and and all of a sudden you're looking at him thinking oh my god this is so fascinating I never thought yes. listening to somebody talk about talking about rocks and yeah. moss could be so interesting but yeah some people yeah. just have that ability that engrossing yeah. ability to suck you in yeah that's knowledge though that that comes yeah, from yeah, yeah. knowing from knowing a subject knowledge is power like the back of your hand and you're pretty yeah. much like that if, if i asked you any questions about a flash or any flash photography you know because i think that's how i found you early doors uh, you was doing a lot of those videos you had with flash photography and I've not a clue. I still don't have a clue. I really struggle with it, and it's it, and I don't know why. It's just something I can't get my head around. Um, lighting. <laughs> oh, again, again that, that's my passion. That's that's my passion. Well, uh, let me tell you how my YouTube started. It's ever so strange. This I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be really, I'll be really brief. And it, it don't it need to be. <laughs> it all came about by that by a video that I created. <clears throat> lots and lots of one to one training every Sunday places full of people on one to one sorry not on, on, on group training on a Sunday especially and everybody kept bringing in these cheap young euro flashes now I'm spending 350 400 pound a time for my Canon speed lights yeah but it upset me when people walk in through the door because they've been sold to death they're walking in with these 30 30 pound maybe 29 pound flashes at the time and I'm guys guys you just can't do it you know That's they're cheap but just throw them just throw, just throw them away the young euro the rubbish so anyway I said, right, I'm sick of people bringing them in because I can't stop people from bringing them in. So I bought a couple yeah. and I did a test against the um, the Canon Speedlight. So I've got a 400 pound Speedlight against a 30 pound Yong Yuo Flash. And they right. both, it's almost like the guts are the same inside with the exception of the TTL that I don't use anyway. I only yeah. use my flashes in manual. And they both produce the same results. So I then said... <clears throat> And she was my assistant at the time working in a studio, a girl called, lovely girl called Kelly. So I said, Kelly, shall we go out and make a video? I'll get you to do some poses. We'll go to Halifax. We'll go to the wind farm. So I thought that might make a, a nice, interesting background. Yeah. And oh, by the way, can you, you know, spice it up a bit? Yeah, no problem at all, because she was into that anyway. She's a bit of a model, so that worked out fine. So we just went and did a video. I uploaded it to YouTube. I didn't tag it. I didn't do anything from it, nothing at all. And I went and looked at my YouTube channel, something like eight or nine months later when I decided to start my YouTube channel, I swear, I just logged into YouTube and I had like one and a half thousand subscribers. Yeah. Now, yeah. okay, it's only one and a half thousand subscribers, no. but you know yourself, when you yeah. first start out YouTube, you know, getting that 1,000 subscriber milestone is yeah. a milestone indeed. Yes. And I had one and a half thousand subscribers without <laughs> even starting my YouTube channel, if that made sense. It was the most bizarre thing. And I'm like, well, look at that. Well, I've got one and a half thousand people that's going to look at my videos if I start doing YouTube. <laughs> and that's how it came about. It's so really yeah, bizarre. accidentally ended up in the raft. Accidentally ended up <laughs> being a fan. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> you had the recipe though. You had the, the young lady. You had the cheap flashes. <clears throat> and I remember watching that and thinking, right, I'm going to get a young new or flash. Yeah. Because I had no money. I've still got yeah. no money. <laughs> and I, and I, I bought a Mark three or four, something like that. Yeah, they're brilliant, by the way. I had all I had a whole pile of them over there. Yeah. Yeah. Because they do break, but I had a whole pile of them. Yeah. But and uh, I just have a I have a big octi oh whatever it what do they call them? A modifier. Yeah, modifier, yeah. Soft and box. a couple of umbrellas and I just started yeah. playing around with them, mainly with kids. And yeah. and, and enjoy i enjoyed it but it's just one one flash photography and uh, i'm still doing a bit now every now and again i've done some people in the street don't obviously don't charge them anything print a picture off oh look at that as well look at that bad boy there <laughs> oh what's <laughs> happened i thought no, you no, wired no. snap then i i i have a, I have a couple of bugbears when it comes to youtube because youtube is um i, I think 
maybe Thomas Eaton isn't talking to me because of this, because uh, I, I did a bit before Tom, were you there? I think you were there the night Thomas Eaton came on and I went on and did a rampa a rant about uh, regurgitated nonsense. And I mentioned about printing and, and he, he then came on, it was a warm up for Thomas Eaton. And Thomas Eaton came on yeah. and said, you don't realize I've just put a video out last week on about how to set your your your, your PC up and your, your printer up for printing. And I just like, just slagged it all, not him off, absolutely not, but I just slagged off all the regurgitated nonsense that's online. Oh. And, um, oh. and so he, I don't think he was very happy with me, but uh, yeah, that, so that was quite, quite funny. But yeah, you can tell, this is what really annoys me with YouTube because you listen to Mike Brown and you know, no, he knows so what he's talking about. Yes. You listen to Nick Page and you know yes. that he knows what he's talking about. And likewise with Thomas Heaton and so many other photographers out there. Yeah. But then he'll come across <clears throat> these guys you've never heard of before that do nothing but tips videos. And this includes some really big YouTubers out there. It does. Big subscribers. That's all it is. That's what we I'm talking about. We won't mention any names, but I don't want No, not mean. at all. Cool. Go on. Okay. Um, <laughs> but you could just tell that everything is, I'm just going to look at other people's information, tips, write it down, yeah, and then yeah. just basically translate it, translate that. So when they're talking, you know that that's, they're not genuinely telling you yeah. as it is. They're well, almost like reading it from a script. Right, I've just pointed, I've got, got that printer there, a uh, Canon printer. It's, I've, all I wanted was a, an SRA3 a3 plus printer didn't you buy a nikon printer no um, <laughs> um, uh, oh they don't do them can you see the badge can you see the badge from there <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's a pentax yeah. printer <laughs> yeah it's very good i had a i had a, an epson printer years ago i was gonna go into business uh well i did go into business as a freelance uh, graphic designer and i got myself this this big printer and continuous ink systems and it, oh god and, and and i learned the hard way by doing that back then and i got rid of it because it was so expensive and nowadays like you can pick that up there from pentax for less than 200 quid and it'll do me fine no <laughs> i'm gonna um, have you asked me any questions yet by the way I, I've asked a few I've asked a few I am looking at it now thinking I'm just gonna throw this on floor because Gavin save me Gavin come and save me right for for anyone who's this is like the snooker commentator if you're watching in black and white Gary is behind the podcast microphone <laughs> so when, when, if you've not watched the video Gavin liked his mic. Well, I am pretty similar. I've got you because you want you want your voice, you know, close. Now tonight, Gary, Gary's got a pretty good microphone set up and he, he doesn't need a big fluffy thing in front of him. So we're, we're fortunate tonight that we've not got that. Because I can if see my, if beautiful, my audio sounds beautiful. If my audio sounds bad, by the way, I have a professional mic set up here. It's my and fault. it was Mally it's that convinced my, me right. not to use this. <laughs> Let's get which is a no, shame because I like let, using this. <laughs> let's get it right. Let's get it right. We've spent we spent an hour trying to set it up. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I'm, we've come down to the best solution, and it sounds good. It sounds good. How long, I wouldn't, I wouldn't how long have we you. been talking, by the way? We've been well. Better, we better wrap it up actually, because it's an. Yeah, hour. It's, it's okay for me, but I'm just concerned about poor old people having to listen to your dulcet tones. Let's have, well, I, <laughs> it's a, it's nine forty four. And my I dulcet, should be in bed. I'm an OAP. My dulcet tones are. It's one hour and fifty two minutes. We've been. Oh, talking. how are you, you going to? How, how can you cut that down? I can't. How can you cut that down? <laughs> you can't. Cut that down. No, I, I, I'm cutting them down to an hour. I, I was going to start streamlining things and having questions. But that's what not. What we covered on? What have we covered on your we've, list? We've, we've if covered, you want to ask your question. So one, I put one of the first. You were no, I've done that one. Uh, skill levels. Do you need to be yeah. called? We've covered that. So you actually yeah, answered boring, that. And it's a boring question. And it, yeah, but it's it's not. It's not. I, no, it's. I, yeah, it is. Uh, what I'm what was just, the question? I'll, 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 I'll rattle through the answers. What was the question? It's been an awful year for business. We was going to get to, and it's been tough for yourself. I know, and it's been tough for everyone with what's happened. But the, the, it's, I can't even say it's a question, but. <laughs> Um, what advice would you give to someone starting out or just getting going into photography uh, as a business, as a, a professional? Because I have to say this first, Gary, before you answer that, is that you're someone to me, I've written down here, someone who never stops and he's always pushing 
and and the business side of thing uh, you're someone that just even when it's tough you find a way you find a way and uh, it's been tough hasn't it and I think someone starting out it's going to be difficult at this moment in time for anyone starting out any business but in photography what advice can you give starting um it, it, it's the same people ask me you know am i too late to start vlogging and mm. my, my my answer is simple you know there's never a good time there's never an unsaturated market the minute you find an unsaturated market it will become a saturated market overnight so you know there's going to be competition no matter what and my advice is simple my advice is simple i've had other businesses in the past past there are thinkers and there are doers yeah, we can all think about doing it, but just do it. You don't know what's the worst that can happen. <laughs> Realistically, what's the worst that can happen? Really? You're not going to die. You know, you don't have to remortgage your house and therefore you and your family are going to be out on your ear. You know, if you're serious about doing it, then do it. And if it means that you have to take an evening job to, you know, to help with the bills, then there's thinkers and doers. Yeah. Thinkers and doers. Stop thinking and do it. If you want to start YouTubing, you know, you, you're never going to be a Thomas Heaton. There's a reason why Thomas Heaton is Thomas Heaton is because he's Thomas Heaton. Yeah, there's right? only one. Yeah. But you don't have to be Thomas Heaton. You don't have to be Peter McKinnon. Yeah. If you if you want to be a, a vlogger, then go and vlog. Just yeah. start being a vlogger. If you want to take pictures for a living, then start taking pictures for a living. If it doesn't work out, go do something else. But there's thinkers and doers. Brilliant. That's it. See you, folks. Boom. Mic drop from Gary. It's been yeah. tough for me. I, yeah, you know, and it it's has. still it's still tough now. This yeah. has been, without stating the obvious, the toughest year. I've had no support from from the country, and yeah. I've had no money. I have no money now. I don't know what I'm, what we're going to do in July, in June, when we're going to start. You know, because people are, are starting to rebook us now from weddings that have cancelled and postponed and all of a sudden i'm thinking to myself i'm gonna have some money in my pocket in june and it's gonna be the first time in such a long time you know and i've never been rich i've never been wealthy and you know i've had businesses in the past but i've never been in that privileged position i've just started with nothing and just grown and that's that's it thinkers and doers sorry brilliant no brilliant um when are you moving to scotland <gasps> i'll do it tomorrow I'll do it tomorrow. There's a, there's another problem now though. I got I got I got grandkids. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is grandkids. You know, one one minute, one minute you're on the Raz with your mates. Yes. One one minute you're going to, you know, Ibiza on stag do's and, and getting drunk and, and and being sick in the street. And now all of a sudden you you've got grandparent duties. It's like, how did that just happen? How did that just happen? Yeah, yeah, so uh, no, but Brilliant. no, an answer to your question. Uh, yeah, yeah, in a tomorrow I'd, yeah. I'd move in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully, I get for come with you sometime this year. That would be, uh, yeah. we keep saying it, but yeah, I hope to. Yeah, I hope to. Well, if all those yeah. other vloggers aren't too busy, you know, well, yeah, if, well, <laughs> yeah, you know. If they're all really, I've, really busy, come down I've, to me and we'll maybe go out again. When I've been Vancouver, I'll pop over and I'll race you to that one. I'll race you to that one. I'm going you're to with Mr. Gibbs. You're on. Yeah, he's an absolute gent. He really is. Cool. But we're not is any here questions? for that. Is any questions done? That's it. I'm done. We're done. You can go now. That's oh, it. okay. Right. But just for the record, when I interview people, I always do like funny questions at the end and I always make people well, I was going know, to ask you. smile on their face. So what, go for what, it. What did you want for... <laughs> go for it. Go You've for it. Make it. me laugh. You've done it. You've made me laugh. No, I was going to ask you what's for tea, but it's took us that long to get set up. It's nearly supper. Yeah, it is. Yeah. What's for tea? What have you, have you had for tea? I've had I'll nothing tell... for tea, actually. Have you not had anything? Bloody, bloody starving. All right, go on home. Get yourself a chippy tea. Mally, a pleasure and a privilege always. And uh, oh. do me a favour, just, yeah. you know, if you don't get the views that you expect, just keep them going, you know. I don't, I, I don't I care, Gary. I did. So genuinely now, everyone who's watching and yourself, although I'm not, I don't No I don't one's going to be watching at this point. I'd, well, I say exactly, you can say what I want. Yeah. Uh, say I don't what you want now. I don't, I don't care mm. about the views. I don't care about um, all that stuff that people, 
So I've asked people that I like, I admire, I respect, I watch, I comment on, and I get a lot from. Mike Brown, I, I'm nervous to ask him. To be honest, I was nervous asking you. I'm nervous asking everyone. Everyone I've asked, I've been really worried about asking. And everyone I, I am asking are still saying yes. So I must be doing something right. So I'll carry on. And well, thank you very much, Gary, for coming on. I, I get asked to talk at camera clubs. And, you know, if I'm in a position to turn around and say, right, OK, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come and talk at your camera club. I'll charge you 500 quid. Then don't book me because I'm not the right person for your camera club. If you ask me to talk at your camera club, I should feel highly honoured. Yes, I'd like a bit yeah. of remuneration just to cover the costs, you know, I mean, of, of travelling. But at the end of the day, if somebody asks you, you know, and they think that you're good enough to come and talk at your at our camera club, for instance, then there should be that element of, you know, wow, wow. that's that's pretty cool. That's <laughs> you know, it? I'm I'm in a, I'm in a good place right now. So when yeah. you ask me, so don't be afraid of asking anybody. You know, yeah. if anybody shuns you off, then they're not the right person for you. They're yeah. not. They're yeah. not. At the end of the day, somebody should think, oh, bloody hell, you know, Mally's asked me to, yeah, you know, because at the end of the day, you're, you know, you're, you're a big player on this scene. Give and uh, there you are, and you've got to know that inside. You've got to know it. See, we're carrying on again, aren't we? Well, I'm going to stop recording, so let me just say this. Thank you very much, Gary. Thanks so much again. And the two kind. Uh, right, go, go and get your chippy tea. I'll have to show you, but he's got, he's got start again here. Right, I need for a start record. I'm nervous at this point. I get to the end of these interviews, nervous because when we're recording on Zoom, right, we're going to do it. Sit there. Oh, vloggers, don't we do that? <laughs> Sit there.